Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So I've just unwrapped a new pad of paper. Um, Bockingford, this is a block. And this particular sheet is, this block is 14 by 10 inches. And um, it's the sort that's glued all the way around. Okay, so you can um, be sure that it won't buckle when you make it wet. There's just a little open part um, here where you slide your knife in and you can detach the sheet once you've done your painting. You could of course take the sheet off before you do the painting and do it loose and free if you wanted to, or you could take it off and cut it up. No rules here, but um, for this one, I'm going to keep it attached to its neighbor. And I'm going to um, try and draw some dragonflies. And these ones I want to do over some leaves. So I'm going to probably sort of towards the end, I will put in some leaves and perhaps some bulrushes. So sort of something like that. And I know you probably can't see this, but I can't draw heavily. It's just not something I can do. So I'm going to use my palette, um, which is a plate. And this is a temporary one because at the moment I'm on holiday in Canterbury in England and I'm away from my studio. So I'm working with a limited range of equipment. And uh, I'm hoping that this video, video is not going to annoy you because it will have a bit of shadow on it. But we'll try, do our best. Um, and I've got my reference material here, which is my preliminary sketch. So I'm going to pop that down in front of me so that I can follow uh, myself, so to speak. So my way of drawing about, um, a um, dragonfly is to draw a body. And I don't really care what shape it is because I don't, I don't really know that dragonflies have a particular shape. I think they vary a lot. So we're just going to draw something like that, which I think you can see. And then for the wings, the way, the way I do it is find a point in the center of the body and then draw a line through that center like that. And then at a fairly sort of narrow space, just draw the other part of a, cro of a cross, a sort of flattened cross. And that then gives you something to go by when you want to draw in the wings. So you're going to do it something like that. One thing that dragonflies has, have is they tend to have a curve on the wing and then a sort of upward curve there. And then the bottom one, you can leave it a bit loose for artistic license. So like that. And then you're going to want to draw a, a body uh, long, I suppose this is the, the head and then there's the top part of the thorax, I suppose it is. And then you're going to draw your row of sausages here going down until, until it's long enough and you think, oh, that's long enough uh, for artistic license. And then I'm going to do another one over here and uh, maybe we'll do it around about here. So we'll draw again a circle for the head a sort of oval for the thorax. You can put the rest of the body in now if you want, or you can do what I just did, find the center roughly there. We're gonna make um, the, the wings on this one a little bit more upward going. So, so something like that. And then we'll go up and down and up and round like that. Once you've done a few of these, you won't be too inhibited, hopefully. You don't need both of the wings to be, all of the wings to be too accurate. And then we'll draw the 
the sausages for the body. Something to be said for working on larger paper sometimes. I've done a lot of work on small sheets recently, but uh, I decided since, well, I just decided, and I'm going to put some leaves in down here, and we will put some um, bulrushes. I'm not quite sure exactly where yet, but so that's that's the sketch. And uh, now we're going to start to paint it. So for the wings, I think I'll probably use a big brush. And I'm making this up as I go along. So uh, I'm going to wet the background. So no, not the background. I'm going to wet the wings. And then I'm just going to drop paint in. And it's a case of, oh, what colour do I fancy? Shall we do lilac? Mauve, purple, pink, whatever. Uh, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? Um, I wonder what would happen. Mm. If you use a, an arrangement like this, you can sort of just blend a few colours together. If we're going to have leaves down the bottom, we might want to have a little bit of contrast. So maybe we want it in a sort of pinkish, but we're not going to do only one colour because that wouldn't be good. So we'll... We'll drop in some different colours. Maybe a bit of blue. And then I'm just going to pop in some water. Make one of them lighter than the other one. If you feel you've gone a bit too dark in places, just put the brush on, twist it to lift out, and then it gets a bit more of a chance to breathe. But sometimes you just have to put the paint on first before you can actually do it right. And then for the centre, let's put some sort of greyish stuff here. And then maybe let's go to bluey grey sort of changing to different blue as we go down. It's just, you're making a design. Don't, don't worry about realism at all. Don't worry about anything. Now I'm going to um, just kind of, with some clean water, hopefully, let some of this paint out, put it out to play. Because if there's one thing you can say about dragonflies, the repository, repository of our dreams, if you like, is that they are probably in constant movement. So I'm going to try to represent that a little bit by breaking the lines and letting the colour go where it wants. This is an idea. Let me pick that one up a bit. Okay, and then this one over here on the side, I'll do roughly the same thing. I'm working with a big brush. This is a uh, 14, a draw well, as usual. I think I might do this one over here mostly blue, but uh, we'll probably pop in different shades of blue, like this. And then maybe 
to the body and contrasting brownish sort of thing. We'll just drag all that down and break it again. There must be as many ways of painting any subject as there are people because Whatever you do is going to, as long as you're not copying somebody else's work, whatever you do is going to reflect you. So just lifting some of that up. And that there. This paper is um, uh, very well known as being a good paper for making corrections. So if you make a mistake, you can often just lift it out. So we're trying to do a few rushes here. And we'll do a few more over this side, but we'll do them in a different colour. More bluish, because the light can come from one side and so the other side is going to be more bluish, greyish. Just make a dancing pattern there. And uh, we might want to pop in a little bit of blue for the sky, but not too much. I'm hoping we're going to be able to correct the colour for the video because I'm sure there's very little light here at the moment because of the time of day. And then in the middle here, let's have some, a few more. Leaves and things. And then we will need to probably soon let that dry, partially anyway. And the question is at this point, do you come in with pen and give stronger outlines to everything or do you stick with the colour? And I think for this one, I think probably I'm going to stick with colour. I might use a pen for the antennae on the heads of the... Um, yeah, we'll see, see how it goes. and give them a little bit more body, so to speak, without making them look heavy. Go with the, I think I might go with this pencil for here. Put in some details. I look, quite like this pencil with watercolour because it's it's a watercolour pencil but it has a very powerful melting um, character. So when you put it into water it goes very dark. So you just want a little bit, not much. 
Very easy to get carried away. It will, of course, dry a little bit lighter, so let me just put some shadow down the side of the body. And maybe with a smaller brush, come in and wet that so we get some nice blurring. And to get that too when you're working up here. I suppose you could call this multimedia. And you don't really know what it's going to look like until it's dried and finished moving, because it will move. So we'll let that dry. If something goes wrong with it, we can probably correct it. And over here, the same thing really. Um, we just want to vary the colour, just keep it mobile. Let's we'll turn that around a little bit. We could, if we wanted to, do a few spatters. Going to do I'm not going to do the bulrushes brown because I think that's not particularly beautiful. So I'm going to do them blue. And in a minute I'll draw the stems. Well maybe I'll do it now. I'll sort it with a pen, pencil. And put one here. It's a nice navy blue colour.
I forgot to talk. Um, just putting in a bit more um, greenery down here just to strengthen that up a bit, to balance it with the top part. So I think I'm going to have to stop now and let that dry. So I'm going to now just do a little bit of detail at this point. Um, I'm going to put in the eyes and uh, the legs. And I think the color of the eyes tends to be on the red side. So we'll just pop in something reddish. It won't be very red because of course it's going to pick up. And we'll do the same thing on this side, something sort of reddish. And uh, there's the antennae already in and then there's I'm not quite sure if it's got more antennae or, or what. Um, so I'm just going to put shadow on one side, emphasize that on, on various things. So like the, the heads of the bulrushes. So we've, we've ended up with a kind of bluish sort of effect here. And um, same thing here on the same side bringing out some of that black a little bit from the pencil. And um, I feel, I don't know, you could, you could go either way, really. You can come in with some pen now if you want, just to perhaps emphasize the shape a little bit, get the shape back if you've lost it a bit. Just do whatever you find pleases you. You're trying to make something that you find attractive. And to me, I think, I don't know if it's because my vision isn't all that sensitive or whether it's because I'm just kind of used to having a line around things. It's perhaps a habit, I don't know. But I do feel, I'm, I feel more comfortable with my paintings when I've finished them, if I've done a little bit of pen and ink in there. Usually, sometimes you don't need it. But you can correct the shape as well. If the shape's gone a little bit wrong, and you, or you feel it's a bit wrong, you can sort of pull it back. This looks like lollipops to me. Okay, so then the same here, just kind of restore that curve that I've lost a bit there. You don't want too much in the way of lines because really when you look at the dragonfly, a photo of a dragon, we didn't see many this year, I think it was too hot. Uh, we don't get many anyway because we don't live anywhere near any water and this year. It was so dry. We still got another 10 days of drought. It's ridiculous. So I'm afraid that this year probably wasn't a good year for the insects actually, to be honest. We did have an awful lot of swallows. So I'm just starting to think about lunch. On holiday, left my dogs behind with the with my my husband, and he's having a great time on his own, you know. And having got to that point, I'm now just going to pick up a few blobs of whatever colours I've got here. So I've got some orange, and there's a little bit of mauve. And similarly over here, a bit of orange, just emphasizing some spots of color. And we had mauve here. And then on this side I had blue. Trying to just be inspired by the iridescence without going to the step, of, as far as the step of putting iri iridescent medium on. So just letting the colors 
sort of speak for themselves, hopefully. And um, let me think. We probably need some dark greens, just a few of the stems. I'm mixing um, brown with green to give us a more shadowy colour. And this is the benefit of having the paints out like this. You can mix them and get a variety that you just can't get if you're just dipping into those little squares. They're just a starting point, really, when you're painting. Those little squares are just never going to free you up. They're going to bring you down. They're going to play around without you or something like that. What's that song? Never going to be, be, be. Yeah, I know. I never claimed to be able to sing. Right. So there we are. That's that. That's done. There they are. Not dry yet. But um hope you enjoy doing that. I think you'll find it fun and I'll let you go now. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. Pop over to dianeanton.com if you want to download a free sketch. And um, there's plenty of others there to choose from too. And I'll see you again soon. So bye everybody. Bye for now. Bye bye. <laughs>